Alexa, lights on. After four years of development, it's finally time to showcase my new and improved Hot Toys collection. Let's do this. What is up everybody? It is Riley Reviews back again with another video and today has been one that a lot of people have been asking me for a full in-depth six scale collection tour. Now believe it or not, it's been almost two years since I've done an updated collection tour and this one will definitely be my best one yet. I've picked up my fair share of new figures and I cannot wait to show you every single one of them. But before we do that, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if you did enjoy the video. It really does help the channel grow and I greatly appreciate it. But without further ado, let's find out how much money I wasted on toys. Now, to kick things off, let's start with the Spider-Verse display, which is honestly one of my favorites, simply because it's almost ever-changing. Being a shelf dedicated to the Sony and MCU Spider-Verse is really cool because I'm able to break the canon, I guess you'd say. Form an anomaly. <laughs> okay. In all seriousness, it allows me to be really creative with Spider-Man figures, starting off with these two absolute bangers. These are the Spider-Man 2 VGM characters of Miles and Peter, and they look absolutely beautiful. Some of my favorite poses here, even though someone's gonna comment and say how bad they are, cause that's just how it goes. What a fantastic pairing though. There's something about pairing companion pieces in the display that really resonates well with me. I'm just really proud of the way these both look and cannot wait to display them with the black suit and Venom figure from the Insomniac Spider-Man 2 game. These are some of the new Spider-Man figures from Hot Toys, and you can see that they're really evolving as a company. And standing right below them is the D23 exclusive Avengers Campus Spider-Man, which is very unique. A lot of people don't have this and don't own this absolute grail of a six scale Truro. This is really cool because it is from the Disneyland ride and it actually comes with the web spider bot. Now this Hot Toys Scarlet Spider-Man has to be one of the most poseable Hot Toys ever as a Spider-Man figure. It is truly so much fun to pose as I have him in kind of a basic pose as I'm saying that, but it's a work in progress. They did a really great job on the color tones of this iconic suit. And on top of that, the paintwork on this Carnage figure is absolute god tier. I am not kidding you guys. If you want a Spider-Verse style villain character on your shelf, Carnage is your number one pick. This is one of the best Spider-Verse figures in my entire collection. For starters, he's absolutely enormous, but you can crunch his legs to make him look a little shorter as you can see here. He has these bendable tendrils that you can actually move and bend, which is freaky, but gives tons of posing opportunity. And speaking of posing, this figure actually has open joints, which is not typical from Hot Toys, so take that for what you will. Now, you can't have Carnage without Venom, so I had to have him flanking behind him, and he also looks super cool and very imposing. The Carnage figure actually came with this bust of Eddie Brock, so it's really nice because you can actually put that on the Venom figure. That way you can recreate the We Are Venom scene, and the paintwork on this small tiny head sculpt is insane. What isn't tiny, however, is this huge sword that comes with the figure, and you can again see when Hot Toys make symbiotic figures, they showcase all of their minor details that they are known for. Even with these small accessories, all of the paintwork is pretty next level. You know what's also next level? This next figure coming up, which is the Miles Morales from Into the Spider-Verse. Again, another figure that Hot Toys absolutely hits the mark on. They're not typically used to making younger characters, especially of Spider-Man. So seeing them use a newly developed body for the Spider-Man figure is so satisfying and can pose an absolute treat. And for people who don't like creases on their Spider-Man figures, this one actually is almost all fabric, so you don't really face that issue. And, okay, that was too many ands, but the tailoring on this suit is also nice with a wired jacket. The one thing that's an L is that this has no real Jordans, unfortunately. They are some boof ones because they couldn't get the license, but funnily enough, I have the Jordan 1 Spider-Verse shoes that he wore in the movie, which is pretty fire. I can't even lie, this is pretty dope. Now this Mysterio hot toy may just be one of the most underrated Spider-Man villain figures ever. 
Just look at how that blue bubble head pops on the shelf. This actually also came with a Jake Gyllenhaal head sculpt from Far From Home, of course. And there's just really cool accessories in this piece with the smoke effects under his base. And the wired cape is a very nice touch. You can find this for really cheap on the aftermarket, and I'd highly recommend it. Now here's something I may not recommend as much, these two Fison custom figures, because they do look a tad too buff, like Toby was buff but not to this level. Overall though, they're really cool, they are the Hot Toys suits that were made in 2011 or 2012 I believe, but the fabric worn suits are put on custom Fison bodies that make them look a lot more fuller as you can see and probably a little too much but it still looks pretty cool and yes I know I'm using the wrong base for the red Toby. There isn't a dynamic pole that came with him so had to use the Scarlet Spider base there. Now the real question in which everyone's asking is if I'm going to be getting the new black suit Toby that's coming. Well that depends on one thing. Fix the damn figure first. You'll get your rent when you fix this damn door! Okay, we're getting off topic, but these figures are more so placeholders. They will be changed in the future, but I think it's time to show what everyone's been waiting for if you're a Spider-Man fan. My infamous, glorious, spectacular, beautiful Spider-Man No Way Home line. Now there's a reason why this is sitting at top shelf. The amount of nostalgia that is sitting on this shelf must be studied. 20 years of generations of Spider-Man villains and heroes put onto a shelf, put onto the big screen that we saw in 2021. One of the biggest smash hits of the decade. And I don't care if the nostalgia berries were hitting, No Way Home is the greatest Spider-Man movie in my opinion. And starting off with the shelf, I wanted to showcase the GOAT Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. Look at how badass this base is. Yes, I know the sticker price is high on the deluxe, but it's worth every penny in my opinion. I know there's people trembling in fear at the amount of creases on his legs. Yes, I know. We'll be okay, guys. It'll be okay. Forgot to also mention this base actually shed sand, so that's a thing. <laughs> But let's move on to Doc Ock, which is yet another controversial figure from the Hot Toys line, especially No Way Home because of the head sculpt. A lot of people absolutely despise it. Other people think it's decent and 1% out there who actually likes it. <laughs> a lot of people don't like the sculpt that is shown here, but I just think it's very mid. The Doc Ock tentacles and everything else is absolutely beautiful though. What is also beautiful is this damn Green Goblin. This figure is absolutely amazing just screams nostalgia from the first spider-man film that's why i have toby and doc ock right around him and you know he had to have his goblin bomb it's a pretty iconic moment in the film and the og films this figure also included his trusty glider and it didn't include that adjustment stand there shout out to collecting weekly zach for getting me a specific height modifier so i can have him actually standing in my shelf but ultimately, this is one of the better figures of the No Way Home line. I'm really impressed with this one, other than no ab crunch, which kind of sucks because you want Goblin crunched. But this is another heavy hitter, being the integrated suit from the No Way Home film. But regardless of what you think of the suit design, this figure is insane. It comes with probably the most accessories I've ever gotten in a figure ever. Yet another Hot Toys diorama base. They went crazy with the No Way Home dioramas and I'm all for it. Replicating the end final battle scene with all of these figures is what I've been waiting for for years since announcement. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna show myself up for this pose. I think this is one of maybe the best pose in my collection. I just absolutely adore it. Don't think I'll ever change it. Now it's time to move on to the other Tom Holland, which is the best Spider-Man figure we've ever gotten from Hot Toys. That is not an understatement. Once you all finally get this in hand, you're gonna realize why I am saying this. This is an absolute work of art. The sculpt, the suit, the colors just pop so much on the shelf. The one damn thing that I'm regretting in my life why didn't I get the snow base? I am low key regretting it. Having it here with all the dioramas just makes the base look small now. <laughs> so I'm definitely gonna hunt for that snow base because 
I think it's really gonna complete the look and just look amazing. Okay, I swear that wasn't planned. Here we have the amazing Spider-Man from the TASM 2 movie, Not No Way Home, because they couldn't get the license, yada yada, I don't want to get into that, but this is another great figure. Comes with this lizard diorama base, which is also amazing. Which one do y'all like better, the lizard or the Sandman base? If you had to choose, which one are you picking? Because both of them have their fair share of nostalgia and presence. Look at all that detail put into the stone and the actual skin on the lizard. It's just a really nice diorama. Super underrated in my opinion. And getting the custom white eye lenses really made this figure come alive for me. Oh boy, when we're talking about presents, Jamie Foxx's Electro Hot Toy is definitely up there. The sculpt is probably the best one of the No Way Home line with Green Goblin, I'd say. They're very close. Maybe the Green Goblin takes it, to be honest, but Electro is zero slouch. It looks exactly like Jamie Foxx. Now, this may be a hot take, but apart from the jointed elbows, this is a top three No Way Home figure for me. They absolutely nailed this figure. You know, throughout the years, I've given the Hot Toys No Way Home line a lot of shit, to be honest, but there is a lot of gold on top of that because figures like these are pretty close to perfection. The sculpt's really great, the whole damaged and tethered look of the new suit, and getting that classic goblin purple hood with the goggles is really cool, and you can actually take off the goggles to see the Willem Dafoe head sculpt, which is a 10. Now this is an interesting one because it technically isn't totally accurate because I'm using the Multiverse of Madness Doctor Strange in my No Way Home line, but it gets the job done and is just a better figure with a better sculpt. You can see the rock platform where he's casting the spell is actually an LED light up, which is a really nice touch. You can see the glow almost on his face, recreating that whole scene when he botched the spell is a really nice touch from Hot Toys and I think it just really works for this figure. Now, we're not totally done with these Spider-Verse. We got one more creeping up above the cases, which a lot of people don't see because he's very high up in my room. The Jazz Inc. Vulture, which is a really nice piece. I do have to kind of futz with the fur around his neck, but apart from that, the wings are absolutely massive. They're about the size of the whole case in total, but that's why he's outside of the case because he wouldn't really fit unless I want him super wedged in. Just a cool villain to have on the Spider-Verse shelf. But closing out these Spider-Man figures in my collection, I am immensely proud and satisfied of the finished look, especially of this No Way Home shelf. I always had this vision to complete and collect just about everything from this line. I'm just finally able to sit back and enjoy the work and dedication put into getting this all set up together. Actually, scratch that. I do need a snow base, so apart from that, I am able to finally move on from this line. Now let's move on to the Star Wars display, which is something that I feel like a lot of people don't think I collect. A lot of people think I'm strictly Spider-Man and Batman, but I do have my fair share of Star Wars figures, and I am so profoundly happy with how this looks. This always felt a little empty, but now including the new Vader I just recently received, I think this shelf is spectacular. Having Dark Side Anakin center display of my Star Wars collection can truly bring a tear to my eye, man. This is the character I grew up with. The prequels will always be my Star Wars, and yeah, it just all came full circle and I'm really happy with it. But starting off things with the Mandalorian, and we don't do dull here. This is this is only chrome, chrome babies out there. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm saying this when we'll get a full die cast version a month from now. But yeah, this figure is really nice. With Bo-Katan under him as well is cool. I feel like I have a little niche Mando spot in this little corner here and it works well. Mando definitely fell off in season three, but the first two seasons will definitely hold a special place in my heart, and I gotta collect most of it. And right here is not only Mandalorian, but Clone Wars with Bo-Katan. I can do a lot of fun things with that. And we also have Empire Strikes Back shown. You gotta have some OT sprinkled love in there because the OT is, you know, the beginning. That's the start. I obviously didn't grow up with it, but it still definitely holds up there to be the some of the best Star Wars we've ever gotten. I'm still a prequels guy. I mean, I'm, I'm just going to keep it real. Prequels is my jam, but I can't deny that Empire Strikes Back is one of the most iconic, the most iconic Star Wars film, probably. And this is just a classic and easygoing pose for Boba Fett. 
I'm really happy with how this looks. He also has a wired cloak on the side, which is a nice touch. Now this figure has a huge story to Riley Reviews because this is my first ever six scale figure I've ever received. I actually got this as a gift when I graduated high school when I was 18 and that was my very first hot toy, which is kind of insane to think about because now we're at the spot where I have now 40 plus figures, but it always started with one and this is gonna be that one right here. And this is actually gonna be I believe like my third or second, I this is a very close one to my ESB and y'all know why I got this. I mean, Hayden, I've said this time and time again, that is my guy. This is the best Star Wars character of all time is Anakin Skywalker. No one will ever, ever, ever change my opinion on that because he is just Star Wars for me and the droid lava base is so peak. I understand the grail rise price of this because it's one of those figures where it absolutely stands out in your Star Wars collection. I think we're all still in disbelief why there isn't a new and improved sculpted Dark Side Anakin or even rooted. I am shocked because I thought we would have definitely gotten it by now, but that doesn't seem to be the case. But I'm happy with this one I have in my collection. I don't have to worry about a 2.0. But yeah, Star Wars wise, this is my holy grail. And this figure is actually the latest acquisition. After waiting three to four months for Sideshow to ship the damn thing when it released, I finally have it and was waiting for this specific figure to film this tour. So blame this figure and blame Sideshow probably because I know they don't mean to, but yeah, this is the reason why my collection took so long because I wanted to have this displayed and it just, I, I think it was worth it. It was worth the wait. I'm just gonna say it. Hit the like button if it was. Hit the dislike if it wasn't, maybe. I don't know, <laughs> but I think this is absolutely impressive. I love this figure. I'm going to definitely do more content with it soon. Stay tuned for that, but yes, this is absolutely amazing. And we also have old Mando Luke Skywalker above them, which is an iconic scene. I, I needed to have this. You got to have this on your Star Wars shelf to replicate that scene of Luke Skywalker returning where the whole world, the internet exploded. I still remember the moment it happened. I don't think any Star Wars fan will ever forget that scene. After filming, I'm realizing a lot of my Star Wars poses are similar. Definitely gonna have to change that later, but this pose I definitely don't wanna change. This Obi-Wan is, it's iconic. It's a classic pose for Obi-Wan, and I think it looks really great. A lot of people don't like the way the sculpt looks. This is the Revenge of the Sith Hot Toys Obi-Wan. Let me know what you guys think. I think it's fine. I think it's a little overhated. I think it's just decent. It's not that bad, but I'm happy with it. I think it looks really great. We have new Obi-Wans coming later, but I think this one totally suffices. It looks like Ewan McGregor to me. And you gotta have his best bro, Cody, to his right, replicating the scene from Avengers of the Sith when, you know, he was trying to blow up his best friend, but <laughs> we know why that happened. This is a really nice one, and Yoda is on the bottom right next to Vader. Kind of a random spot for him to be in. I'm still figuring out where I want him to be, but he still looks cool. As small as he is, He's got presence. Don't worry. The little guy has got presence with the rooted little gray hairs. I mean, you can't beat that. And the sculpt is absolutely amazing. It looks exactly like Yoda. Now let's get to the other sets of cases to the right of my Star Wars, all being on the bottom shelf, not to give it any slide or anything, you know, Star Wars is goaded. But this is yet again another work in progress case. It's a very mix of Clone Wars and other stuff. I am planning on changing this a lot in the future, but it's probably going to be filled with a lot more Clone Wars and prequel era stuff that is releasing in the future, so stay tuned for that. And yeah, I really love this Anakin. I think this Anakin pose is definitely another one of my favorite poses in my collection. I shout out to KG Collector out there. He actually um, inspired the pose and did it himself, which is really awesome. But yes, I think this looks incredible. I like this a lot. Rex is kind of blocked by the middle um, of my case, but that's going to change, obviously, like I said. I just wanted to get them all in a row, but my Clone Wars figures will always be some of my favorites in Star Wars. I absolutely love pairing Anakin with the 501st. It just looks really clean, and the CFL Sabres just do it for me. It looks absolutely badass. I know the wire bugs people, but it's a work in progress, like I said. This solo mole is also very cool. I like the way it looks on the Thanos base, as you can see with some 501st heads. It's really clean. Overall though, the No Way Home Spider-Verse Star Wars trio of shelves really turned out well, and I'm extremely satisfied with how they turned out. 
but I think it's about time we move to DC, which I know there are people out there who want to see because I have gotten some new acquisitions that we will be getting into. But as you can see, DC is very light in comparison to my other shelves because there are still future figures I need to pick up. But let's get the ball rolling with the Batman shelf, with spoiler alert being one of my prized possessions because I love this film so much. Having the inner of the Batman on the shelf is just everything. I've been waiting for this figure forever, and I know there are so many others who are still waiting for this to be shipped. Hopefully, inner get that set. And I do have a six scale plaque signed by the man, the goat himself, Robert Pattinson, to pair with this in art figure. And I know I always say it, but the realism on in art figures are next level. It truly looks like a person is sitting on your shelf. I know we say that with hot toys, but some do give that kind of action figure aspect, but not with in arts figures. I feel like they look like more so statues. And yeah, I'm really happy with this layout. I still think it needs some perfecting. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. But the layout overall is very good, but still not the finalized version yet. So I just wanted to flex the car a little bit because I absolutely love turning this thing on. I've done it so many times. I mean, how could I not? Look at this damn thing with it turned on. It looks absolutely amazing. Jazz and can pat themselves on the back with this vehicle release because it is something special. All the light up features that come with this, I do know it's a hefty price tag, but I'd say if you're a big enough The Batman fan, go for it. You will not be disappointed. And again, you can't beat the display having the Jazz Inc. next to the Inart. It just looks absolutely impressive. And any of the Batman diehard fans out there, I'm, I'm telling y'all, this display is peak. I love it. And another reason to get the Inart is this beautiful bat signal and the beautiful Bruce Wayne rooted sculpt because I actually have this on a Hot Toys body. So if the proportions look a tad off, that is probably why. I wanted to have the cowled and uncowled look in my display room. And as you can see, the sculpt looks so damn good here. I still have yet to futz the hair that much. So if it looks a little spotty, that's probably why. I definitely should get a paintbrush and do that ASAP. But like I said, having this on the Hot Toys body works for me. I don't really see anything wrong with the proportions. And the bat signal again is beautiful. Like they did an amazing job in art. Pat yourselves on the back because having that amber lighting with the beautiful paint and rust effect on the actual bat signal is just spectacular. They did a great job. And like I said, the Bruce here, having him hold the cow is a really cool look. Batman fans are eaten and also Joker fans because I do have the in art Joker, which is still like up there on their releases and it was their first ever release and I still will always look at this here and now and then and be absolutely amazed, especially with the rooted hair. I don't know if I got lucky, but coming out of the box, it was like perfect and I've never styled it or anything and it still looks perfect. Having the actual base here, that is another controversial thing with the magnetic bases and the money. And this was a two pack and I have the second one sitting under him on a different shelf. Like I said, these shelves look very empty. Still a work in progress. I need to get some Bale um, Batman stuff, which will be coming with new releases. But like I said, this is really sweet. You also have the wooden floor and the die cast metal jail cell. Now, the final thing to showcase is not a figure. Surprise, a JND one third statue. Now, for those not familiar, I've had the statue for quite some time. It is my first ever one and it is a pricey one. But like I said, I am a huge The Batman fan and I think this is absolutely amazing. I'm still always dumbfounded when I see the sculpt of the cow. Now we all know JND is the laughing stock of 1.6, but quality wise in their 1.3 is pretty damn impressive, including the silicone mouthpiece right here. It's gonna freak you out. It's gonna freak you out. I know it is because look at that. <laughs> it always does. And it's just, like I said, super lifelike looking and just really cool and unique. But like I said, one of the main gripes is the patents and likeness without the cowl. I do think it's not really that strong if I'm being completely honest. But apart from that, this is just 
beautiful. I absolutely love it. But that just about does it for the DC display and the collection tour in entirety. If you stayed throughout this video this long, you are an absolute legend and I really appreciate you. Do be sure to let me know all of your thoughts in the comments down below. What was your favorite section of the collection tour? Your favorite figure? And do you have any criticisms? I'd love to hear that because I love showcasing this stuff to you people out there watching because you seem to be enjoying it and I really do appreciate all the support as of recent. But again, thank you guys all for watching. If you did enjoy the video, hit that like, hit that subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next one. Take care, guys.